What is going on, moviegoers? If you're new to the channel, my name is Christian. Welcome to Sea World Production. You guys, it's been almost like a week and a half since I put out a video. I've been just been so busy with my personal life, with my son, watching a bunch of shows like Loki, Gen V, and playing Spider-Man 2 on the PS5. I just beat it the other day, and boy, boy, you guys, this was the highlight of my month. So much fun. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a, a small mini brief review about the game because there's so many topics to talk about in today's video. So much stuff that is going on and that's happening and it's exciting. I mean, this weekend, apparently the uh, the deal is going to be done with the studios and sag After, which is super exciting because now actors can actually promote their movies. Studios can actually start shooting these projects, these TV shows. It's been too long and just in time for the marvels for their your, their press tour because this film literally comes out in a couple of weeks and if the deal gets done within the next up and coming days that means guess what you can have a little small mini press tour and have a whole red carpet premiere for the marvels speaking about the marvels let's dive deep into this first topic now this one is interesting this is a massive leak and a massive spoiler. So I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who don't want the film spoiled. So this is the warning. This is the spoiler and we're going to be talking about it. Now, we're all wondering where does the Marvels actually fit in, you know, to this greater universe. And we're talking the multiverse storyline. And that's with most projects within the MCU right now going into phase five. A lot of them just feel kind of random you know what i mean introduction to characters that don't really necessarily have anything to do with the multiverse storyline but with the marvels in this particular scene apparently it was changed last minute monica rambeau spectrum will end up in a different universe the universe with x2 we're talking some of the original x-men and we will be seeing kelsey Grammer as beast return in the Marvels for a post credit scene. I'm like, oh, that shit is dope. That is fun. I mean, look, it, it low-key got, it, it got me kind of more excited to go see the Marvels. I'm like, yo, this is true. This is going to be dope because Kelsey Grammer was perfect in the role as Beast. He only played him twice and he did great given what he was given. You know what I'm talking about? He was phenomenal. So to see him get a second opportunity to play Beast you know, especially like in Deadpool 3 or Avengers of the Secret Wars. That is so exciting. That is so fun. I cannot wait for Deadpool 3. Oh my God, you guys. Deadpool 3 is going to be a game changer and it is going to save the MCU. It's going to be the first billion dollar movie since Spider-Man No Way Home. Spider-Man No Way Home is a Sony film. And, you know, I'm just overly, overly pumped to see where the multiverse story continues. Because honestly... Like I said, that's 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 the next big phase, and I feel like we barely, you know, dabbled in it. You know, certain projects have been in with the multiverse, with Loki, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, but everything else has just kind of been there. So that's exciting. And speaking about speaking of the Marvels, continued on. Apparently, its pre-ticket sales, you guys, are the lowest post-pandemic in the MCU. The lowest. So it's going to struggle at the box office. But if the deal is done between the studio and, you know, sag after, that means, you know, Brie Larson and, you know, all the girls can really help promote this movie and get people out there to see this film. Because if this film bombs, Kevin Feige is going to have to go over and just see what is happening with the MCU. Why are our films aren't doing as good. What's going on with the TV shows? I mean, look at Daredevil Born Again. Speaking of Daredevil Born Again, you guys, let's dive deep into the next topic. Apparently, they had snagged the showrunner from The Punisher. We all remember The Punisher on Netflix, right, with John Bernthal. Perfect. His his introduction in, into Daredevil Season 2 was amazing. And then Electra came, and then Season 2 kind of got a little you know, boring to me. But with The Punisher, you guys, rumored to be appearing in Daredevil Born Again, this has me that much more excited. If you guys don't know, Marvel fired all of their writers off of Daredevil Born Again, and they're starting from scratch. From scratch. So to have the showrunner from The Punisher series definitely, definitely leaves me that much more happier with what they plan to do with Daredevil Born Again. And not only that, you guys, they're snagging the Loki Season 2 directors. And I love Loki Season 2. It is so good. Oh, my God. 
episode four was astonishing. Jonathan Majors as Victor Timely tur be be turned into spaghetti was absolutely just bonkers. I that it was my jaw just dropped because I'm like, what happens now? Was the whole TVA destroyed? It's going to be insane. There's only two episodes left, and I'm that much more excited for the ending of Loki season two and how they're going to wrap it up. I'm hopefully, hopefully, we get to see more of the Kang variants like we saw in the end of Ant Man and the Lost Quantumanium. You know what I mean? The, the Council of Kangs, because that was cool. That's probably the best part in that entirety of that film. But like I said, it's exciting news that, you know, Kevin Feige, you know, he, he saw the footage and he's revamping everything for Daredevil Born Again because he understands, he understands the assignment that, you know, you, you, you have to go off what Netflix has already established. It has to be those, that particular tone. It has to be dark. It has to be gritty. You know what I mean? To have Daredevil only appear in the, you know, well, not only first appear in, you know, episode four. You're killing me, mate. I get it. It's 18 episodes, but... No, 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 no. I'm glad that they're starting over and, you know, they're, they're, they're starting from scratch. And I, I think this is for the best. And if they can do this for all of their projects and not put out mediocre, fatigue comic book material, then do it. Do it. We are done with this kind of crappy comic book material. I'm done with stuff like with Secret Invasion. I'm done with stuff like Thor Love and Thunder. I'm just done with it. Speaking of Thor, you guys, let's dive deep into the next topic. Apparently, Thor 5 is in the works, and Taika Waititi will not be returning to direct the film. Now, look, you guys, I praise Taika for what he did with Thor Ragnarok. He reinvented the character that desperately needed, but then he also fell off the wagon with the over-comedic moments, the over-comedic characters in Thor Love and Thunder, ultimately hurting Thor, because... If I'm being honest with you guys, Thor Love and Thunder is a bottom MCU movie. And I'm talking throughout all of the phases. I'd rather watch Thor The Dark World. I'd rather watch the first Thor. You know, it, it's just bottom tier in my eyes. So hopefully they can find a creative team that take this character much more serious and switch up the tone. Kind of like what the Russo brothers did. Because the Russo brothers, in my opinion, still have the best Thor throughout the entirety of the MCU with Infinity War and Endgame. Give me something like that. Give me that kind of tone. Even Chris Hemsworth said that Thor Love and Thunder was a little bit too comedic for his taste. And he really hopes to go in a different direction with Thor. And I'm completely fine with that, you guys. If you're going to do Thor versus Hercules, cool. Make it a little bit more, you know, dark and gritty. I'm completely fine with that. But please, reunite Thor and Loki. That is what I'm waiting for. I mean, the showrunners for Loki Season 2 said that <clears throat> ideally that is the goal to have these two characters reunite because last time Thor saw Loki he was getting his neck broke by Thanos in Infinity War so I would love to see a reunion oh my god that would be so much fun so Thor 5 you guys is officially in the works and it's exciting Aquaman 2 has been delayed by two days which will now come out December 22nd not much news about Aquaman 2 it comes out in December you know the trailers look fine you know uh this is going to be the last, you know, Snyder-ish film in the, within the DCU, And then it's going to be rebooted by James Gunn, you know, with Superman Legacy and Creature Commandos, Peacemaker Season 2, and everything else he has in store for this new, fresh DC world, you guys. So that's pretty exciting. Hopefully we get some more news about Superman Legacy because I am highly, highly anticipating that film on my list for, you know, 2025, I believe. Yeah, because they start shooting early next year. And... It doesn't come out till 2025, the same year as The Batman 2, which is super exciting. Apparently, Spider-Man 4. Spider-Man 4 is going to be in production late 2024. Zendaya is rumored to be coming back. Tom Holland, obviously. And John Watts. Now, look, John Watts did a phenomenal job with his trilogy. Spider-Man Homecoming, I was just, you know, just re-watching the other day because, like I said, I've been playing Spider-Man 2 on the PS5. And I was like, man, I really want to watch a Spider-Man film. And I love what he did with Spider-Man Homecoming. I, I, I love the aesthetic. I love the feel. I love the, the groundedness of it. I love the, the, the just the life of Peter Parker that he explores. You know, in Spider-Man No Way Home, ending on that huge note, man, of the multiverse. And see Toby return and Andrew return. It was bonkers. It was crazy. So he did a good job. He did a great job with this trilogy, you know. But if I'm being honest with you, look, I, can, I see why the studio wants to bring him back. They made money. Guap. Spider-Man No Way Home made almost $2 billion at the box office. But 
I kind of want to see somebody else's vision for an up and coming new trilogy for Spider-Man in his college days where he's living on his own. Tony's dead. Aunt May is dead. You know, he is struggling mentally, and that's when the symbiote comes into play. So I kind of want to see a much more darker tone with Peter going into his college years. That's what I'm that's what I'm interested in. Can John Watts deliver that? He probably can, but I want to see a different artistic take on Spider-Man. You know what I mean? And you know, like he dropped that Fantastic Four for a reason. You know what I mean? If they're like, look, you have to do Fantastic Four, and then you have to do Spider-Man 4, that's a lot. That is a lot. So who knows? Like I said, right as of right now, it's just a rumor. And as far as Zendaya coming back, I get why you want Zendaya to come back. She has such a massive fan base. But let's move on from MJ. You know, she no longer knows who Peter is. And I don't want to see Peter trying to have it, you know, to convince her, hey, we once knew each other. We were in love. I kind of want to move on from that storyline. Let him do his college days. Introduce possibly like somebody like Gwen Stacy. <laughs> It's just an idea, you guys. It's just an idea. But we'll see what happens. Quick small minute review on Spider-Man 2, the PS5. You guys loved it. Start to finish. It was so much fun. The story was so compelling. This was the greatest iteration of Venom I've ever seen in my life. Tony Todd was just absolutely intimidating, you guys. To see, you know, Harry become Venom was absolutely just bonkers to me. Loved the whole story with Miles Morales and, you know, Mr. Negative. It was so good, so good. The cutscenes, the action, craving the effing hunter, you guys. Craving the hunter. It it got me upset because Craven the Hunter was delayed, right? We were supposed to get Craven this month. And I was like, man, can you imagine? They, they could have capitalized on Spider-Man 2 because everybody's talking about how great Craven the Hunter was in this game. It was so much fun playing with the symbiote, man, seeing Peter lose control. It was amazing, you guys. Amazing. And it, it gets me that much more excited for Spider-Man 3. The final chapter, you guys. Cletus Cassidy, possibly. <laughs> I am so excited for the future. And it's just been confirmed. Apparently, you know, the Wolverine game that Insomniac is now developing is in the same world of these Spider-Man games. I'm like, oh, we are spoiled. We are spoiled as fans, you guys. And I love it. I appreciate it. I can't wait for Wolverine 2. I can't wait for the new game plus for Spider-Man 2, you guys. I'm just waiting on it. I'm waiting on it. It's already been completed 100%. So much fun, you guys. Like I said, everything evolving around Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation 5 did it for me. Loved it. Every moment. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> and then closing out, you guys, on these two small topics, we're going to be talking about Black Phone 2. We have an official release date of June 27, 2025. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the first one with Ethan Hawke, uh, directed by Scott Derrickson. Great film. I don't see where you would do a sequel, but it could do it could be a prequel ultimately, which I kind of I'm kind of interested in it. I'm like, okay, I can I, I can get behind a prequel film for Black Phone 2. And Barbarian. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Barbarian, but Barbarian was one of the scariest films of this year. Terrified. Apparently, they are developing a video game for Barbarian. I'm like, oh, hell to the doll. That shit was scary. It was terrifying, you guys, to see that massive freaking monster incest creature down there just living. Oh, God, dude. She, it was just gross. She would take people to be her baby. It was terrifying, you guys. I'm telling you, if you're, a, if you're a horror fanatic and you love horror, watch Barbarian. You will not be disappointed. It freaking traumatized me. I absolutely just adored that movie. I was like, man, I did not expect this whatsoever. And the fact that they're coming out with the game has me kind of excited with nervous at the same time. Because I do like horror games. You know, I played the Resident Evil games. I didn't finish The Last of Us Part 1 because, I, you know, I, I'll admit, I bitched out because, you know, certain I'm stuck at a certain part where I was just like, I can't do this no more. It's just way too scary. Um, but, you know what I mean? I, I'm definitely interested to see some of the gameplay for Barbarian. You know, I feel like that's going to be absolutely just crazy. It's going to be crazy. But push your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think about the topics that we discuss in today's video. Thoughts and opinions, you guys. Have you played Spider-Man 2? Have you beaten Spider-Man 2? And just how are you guys doing in general? Please post your comments down below and let me know. Peace.